Hi there, Colin Klupik here. This is a tenon saw. It's used for wood joinery. It's probably the most common type of saw that you'll see in a school workshop. There are variations of this kind of saw around and uh, some of them get quite fancy and really quite nice to use, like the Japanese style saws. But this is probably the most common. Let's have a look in this video at how to hold the saw, how to use it, how to get the most out of it, and how your students might use it and how they perhaps shouldn't use it. The tenon saw is used for cutting simple wood joinery and we'll use this corner half lap to demonstrate. Firstly, how do you hold the saw? The common method is to use a pistol grip with the index finger pointed forwards. This helps to stabilize the saw and stop it from wobbling around too much. You might not think that does much, but you'll see it when you try it. It's much more wobbly when you just grip it with your fist like this. Students will often use a double-handed fist-like grip, which actually tends to make that worse. Then you'll often see them try to attack the timber with all kinds of problems. It's just not very stable. Using a pistol grip gives you one hand free to stabilize things, and with practice, you'll develop a good stable style. Now, a key point of safety here, watch your fingers. I've actually seen someone rush a quick tenon saw cut and cut right over their thumb, leaving it dangling by a thread. Well, maybe not quite that bad, but it was bad. Remember, tenon saws cut really well in both directions and go through skin and bone easily, even though they look reasonably harmless. Students will often place a piece of timber in the bench hook and then use this thumb out grip. That's because it feels natural to do so. But as you can see, your thumb is just inviting trouble. By placing your thumb at 90 degrees to the blade, you significantly increase the risk. A better method is to keep your thumb and fingers in the line of the blade. That way, if you come loose, you'll run along your fingers rather than across them. You'll still damage your fingers, but are less likely to cut them off. This reverse angle shows you that using this method keeps your fingers well away from the teeth and can actually help you to steady the blade. Sorry about the shaky footage, but the camera was on the bench. The next thing to watch is that you make a straight cut. It's easy to go off course, so stop and check regularly. Now, with a half lap joint, I would normally chisel out the waist. But some people like to simply cut away the waist with a tenon saw. It's not my preferred method, because it's hard to see where you're going on the other side. Students then also tend to get a bit overzealous, use the double-handed grip, and then really go for it. This usually ends up causing all kinds of trouble. In this example, I've actually managed a fairly straight cut, but I've had plenty of practice. The result is fairly good, but you can see here that it's easy to go too deep, mostly because it's hard to see what you're doing. So remember to stop and check regularly. The saw cut marks can also leave the surface a bit rough, which you can clean up with a chisel, preferably a nice wide one. But like I said, I'd prefer to chisel the joint from the start, but that's just me. So for the most part, remember to keep your grip right, your fingers away from the teeth of the blade, and check your cut regularly. Try to keep it straight, and keep practicing. That is a quick overview and introduction on the tenon saw. Now, there's a bit more to say about that, and with most things, it takes time and practice to get them working just the way you want. But most importantly, remember, stay safe by never cutting across your fingers. Try to keep your fingers in line with the cut. That won't necessarily guarantee safety, but it will do a lot less damage than if you went straight over the top of them. So, <laughs> keep that in mind. So, stay safe, and we'll see you in the next video.